Have some fun, Matt Crowley. Let's have some fun. All right. So we're, gonna, we're not uploading this. We will begin. We're, we're going to upload all of this. No, we're not. We will begin. Top, Top Gun, Gun Maverick. Maverick. Jinx. 2022. Yes. It's now the what on list of highest grossing movies of all time? 13th. 13th. Yeah. Without yeah. adjust, not adjusted, which we just talked about. Sure. But still, nonetheless, pretty incredible. Yeah. 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 It's impressive. Mm -hmm. Especially for the amount. I, I'd be curious. I'm going to look up next. Not now. Um, because that's actually determined uh, with, with analytics. I should know this. It's the rate at which how long it's been out. It's like run rate, I think, or something like that. Like for how long it's been out versus how much money it's made versus the competition. Okay. So I bet that is probably setting records for the amount of time it's been out. Because yeah. again, like we just, I think Titanic, I said was number two and it had 2.7 or whatever. Right. Um, but it's been out for, what is it, 25 years? Yeah. Well, okay, let's get into that because that kind of fascinates me because you look, you think back to Titanic when that came out. It was probably in the late 90s, mid 90s, but it was DiCaprio blew up and he was, you know, uh, Girls were obsessed over him seeing the movie eight, nine, ten times. Uh, Avatar, I think, is number one on the list, which kind of blows my mind. We won't go too much into that movie um, on its own, but why do you think this movie is having such success so far? I think it's pretty obvious, and, and it takes the comments section of the internet, which is where you get the truth, right? As long as it's not censored. Um, or a bot. Yeah, I mean, I think we all kind of know it to some degree. It's because it was a blockbuster movie. It wasn't woke. It didn't have an agenda. It was an action movie with a 90s golden era, you know, screenplay. Nothing gray, nothing over the top, but it was good. It had characters, it had a character arc, it had conflict, it had a res resolution of conflict, it had a romance, it had everything you wanted from like a traditional movie when you go there to be entertained. It wasn't trying to preach to you, it wasn't trying to teach you, it wasn't trying to make you feel bad about yourself, it wasn't trying to make you really walk away literally learning anything. You went there to entertain you. And movies, video games, books, shows, newspapers, everything. It's all just a modern form of propaganda. Any kind of perusal into 1984 means you'd see we're living into, we're living in that now. It's not even an exaggeration. We are living in it now. And I mention this because it, it, it went counter to all those things. It was just a good entertaining movie without any kind of preaching, dictating, um, with solid performances, you know, and, and everything you'd want from an action movie. Why do you think it did well? It was, man. I think that, you know, just so many people or just were itching for that escapism. And, you know, a great movie in a theater can bring that for a lot of people. And the theaters basically closed down for, what, almost two years across the country or in parts of the country. And this is just really refreshing to get back in and have that experience. And I think, I mean, I'll jump right into it. As far as practical effects go, you know, the human eye is so intelligent that it can recognize CGI the the best cgi in the world it can still recognize it and in this i don't know if this is i'm sure it's widely known at this point but all these actors were actually flying aircrafts and this was real-time footage i think the only cgi they use is maybe for some missile explosions probably but the the truth in storytelling here and the authenticity of the story and it's a generational story and it's it, it was quite touching at times and i i think that's it and tom cruise whatever you personally feel about him and a lot of people have some very strong opinions about tom cruise but he just he killed it here and you know you can see the kind of effort that he puts in to anything that he's behind it's very clear he produced this um i i read that they were initially planning this with uh, tony scott who directed the original top gun back in 86 and he uh, passed away in, what, 2010 or 2011? He committed suicide. Yeah, he committed suicide. I, I think he had brain cancer. Or, sorry, I, yeah, I'm not sure. Did he jump off a building, I think? He jumped off a bridge in Los Angeles. I mean, kind of like a badass Tony Scott way to go out. You know, if you've seen a lot of his movies, you know that you know, he's, he's got a very specific style. But, you know, they put this on hold for five years after he passed away because, you know, t according to Tom Cruise, they couldn't do this movie without Tony Scott, but they figured out a way. And I think they just knocked it out of the park. I'm not a huge fan of the original. I saw the original when I was in college for the first time. So there's not that nostalgia attached to it. And I kind of wish there was because this movie would have been incredible to me if I had that, you know, childhood relationship with it. But still, this was above and beyond anything I expected. Yeah. 
I guess to get back to our original uh, thing that brought us here for your question is, again, it, it was just a great Hollywood blockbuster, which just don't exist anymore. I know. People like to convince themselves Marvel and whatnot are Hollywood block. No, they're not. They're, they're uh, I love, again, credit to Scorsese. What do you call them? Um, amusement park? I think theme park. Theme yeah. park movies or something That's like that. Comp- I mean, it's so accurate. It's all, they're a theme park. Mm-hmm. Like, let me, let's be clear. It's really hard to not have a decent, a decent to good time at Disney World or Six Flags, right? You're going to probably, right? And that's how it works. These Avenger things, like, are they great? Are they like life changing? Are they excellent? Even, or do they? They're all. You know, it's like no. It's like, hey, I went to amusement park today. It was, you know, it was pretty good. It's better than just sitting at home or whatever or watching a show. That's all they are. So they work, right? Because a mass audience will go to it, enjoy it enough that it's good. But then there's like something that comes out like this that really defines what it means to be an actual blockbuster. Good example is I used to work at a really a top tech company. And I was in sales for a short, short amount of time. And it was funny, like, uh, we'd have these quotas, and I was actually crushing my quota. And for me, the reason why is I worked at a top tech company. When I called people, they picked up the phone because I worked at a top tech company, right? Whereas if you're working at a smaller tech company, you're trying your hardest, you're not going to get that. And what was interesting is we'd hit our numbers, myself, my pod, my our, my entire division would hit our numbers all the time. We were, we were, like, really blown away. But they're really conservative numbers. And I was like, we're one of the top tech companies in the world. Of course we're going to hit our numbers. Of course we are, Right. We should hold ourselves to like, we're the top. We should be like astronomically killing it, right? And I think that's what Top Gun did in this case to bring it back to my point versus these Avengers where it's like, yeah, it's Marvel. It's Avengers. It has top actors. They, they pick the best directors they could. Of course, it's going to do pretty good. But you should hold yourself a standard of like, we are going to be error defining, changing it every like amazing. Perform- and it's just not. There's yeah. nothing like that anymore. Yeah. Minus top gun maverick as as we're talking about. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I think, And I think that's exactly what Tom Cruise does for these projects is he holds himself to such a high standard. I, I think he puts his life on the line for a lot of these projects. He, did. he does. I think we all saw that Mission Impossible thing where he jumps on the freaking roof and he breaks his ankle right there. Yeah, and he's been hanging outside of a, a Boeing aircraft, I think, at one point in one of those movies, right? Yeah, I watched the making of that. That was crazy. He, he really did. Yeah. <laughs> like he was like, yeah, really actually doing it. And you can see this in, uh, when they're flying around doing all the stunts, uh, the, the Gs, the G-force is pulling these guys' faces down. It's just, it's, it's so cool to watch. And it's damn near impossible to leave this movie and not want to get in your car and go a thousand miles an hour down the interstate because it was, you know, it was, it was certainly inspiring that way. Um, so to the performances, you know, we, we obviously, you know, Tom Cruise is, is the king of the mountain on this one. What, what are your opinions there as far as he goes? Tom Cruise did a good job. Um, great, you know, great job. It's like watching, I don't know, Jordan or whatever. And it's like, I don't think it was Jordan's like, you know, all-star game or like, you know, playoffs or whatever, but it's, it's, it's Jordan. You're like, he did great. Yeah. I expect him to do great. Yeah. And it wasn't blown away, you know, cause it's, it's Tom Cruise. I don't like Teller. I really don't like Miles Teller. I don't know why. No, why, no, why. I think Whiplash, people really annoyed me with that, like overpraising it. And I wasn't really impressed with him, but I, he did good in this. There, I will say there wasn't a lot of range to give these actors. Um, because mm-hmm. let's be clear, this is not a philosophical or thematically deep movie. It's a blockbuster popcorn flick. So I didn't necessarily expect that. There, this is not, no one's getting Oscars for this, right? No. It's, not this, it's not that kind of movie. But everyone did their job really good. But no one made it. I wasn't like, wow, that's someone to keep my eye on because the subtlety or the nuance of this. No, not really. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't think any actor really had the material to go above and beyond as far as that stuff goes. But yeah, I thought I thought Teller was good. Um, he certainly looks a lot like what's the what's the actor's name who was uh, Goose Anthony Edwards. He was on ER, I think, right? Yeah. So they they resemble each other a lot. I did read that um, the the kid the, or the guy who played um, Hangman. Glenn Powell was uh, Cruz's and Bruckheimer's first choice uh, to play Goose's son. But then Teller came in and read with Cruz, and the chemistry was undeniable between the two of those, so he got it. And they put this Powell kid, who I thought was really, really good, as, uh, I guess, this generation's Iceman, sort of. I liked him. He played the Chad role well. He fits it. He looks it. He acted it. You he know. does. And for me, again, being formerly in combat arms in the military and being around these high testosterone types, the military stuff would be a whole entire podcast to go over, right? The stuff they get right or wrong or that, you know, I don't like. I mean, we could talk a little bit about it, but it did bring back some of that camaraderie. We would go out and grab beers when not not in uniform because you're not supposed to bring, you're not supposed to drink in uniform. I hate when they do that in movies. You're not supposed to drink in uniform, especially in your dress uniform, (laughs) unless you're at a function for the military. They always do that in movies. Anyway, um, the camaraderie, the, the, the shit talking they give each other, the going out and drinking, the having fun, the palling around, that's completely in the military. It's accurate. And there is usually, again, I was in a competitive field when I was in the military, and there was 
there was a Glenn Powell that yeah. were like, you know, wanted to be the best or the fastest ruck marcher or the best shooter and knew it and kind of want to be a, a jerk about it. But not so much you want to deck him, but like enough where you're like, God, that guy's so fucking arrogant. Like, <laughs> but also you kind of respect it because you're all like in a competitive field and you're, you're going to war and you want to make sure that you have the best and people that really are intensely want to be the best. So that fit. I like that. Yeah, of course. I got a question for you kind of in relation to that. How do they, how, do you know how they get the jets and the equipment? Like all the, I mean, cause it's, it's military grade stuff, right? I mean, is it funded at all by, by the military, or the air force or anything? I don't know. I know the military does stuff like that at times. I wouldn't be surprised. I right. know like, uh, save right, right. They did heavy work on bases with actual military officials. When I think there was some funding there. So I couldn't say for certain. I know they have in the past for certain. It was interesting, too, on that note with the military one. I heard, I could have this wrong, I had to do my research. I know they got rid of a lot of the, the anti-China stuff, probably because Tencent was about to invest in this, and then they pulled out. But they did. I think they made the right call with having an ambiguous enemy, because it's not, an, again, it didn't preach to you. It yeah. wasn't like, oh, because we all know Russia's bad, which, Jesus, not even that, or it wasn't the Serbs or, like, you know, Chinese. It was the enemy. It didn't matter who it was. It didn't even give you an idea where you have no idea where that's at. Like, yeah. it could be almost anywhere. I mean, obviously, it wasn't the desert, right? But they did a good job there. It was the right play. Yeah, I love that. I think it was I think it was portrayed well. And then again, it's good to them because, good, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Don't make it. Because as soon as they did, as soon as they would have made it Russia or China or North Korea, you know, then it would be like a whole chance to have a, a line of di- dialogue where it's like, well, in addition to hacking the nukes, they hacked the election. It's like, Jesus Christ. Like, you know, they would have done something like that. So it's best to just say nothing. It's an enemy. They have jets and they're bad guys. Good. Yeah, I love it. Keep it simple. What do you think about the original? Are you a fan? I like it. I thought it was a solid movie. Uh, I, I, for when it came out, for what it was, I enjoyed it. It had a lot more um, emotionality than this movie had. There wasn't any real emotional moments in this movie. I thought that really mattered. Some might argue the moment with Val Kilmer because he's actually like that in real life and he's actually going through. He's still alive, right? Yeah. Yeah, I thought he was. Um, yeah. Through cancer and whatnot. So maybe that was a little emotional. But yeah, I remember when Goose died, even as a kid and as an adult watching it, it was, it was a tough moment. And Cruz acted out really well and his best friend. And it was a tough emotional moment. I didn't feel any of that with this movie at all. Hmm. So I felt like the original at least went to that depth and made it there. This one kept it punchy and high level. And the lows were like barely lows. They were mids at best. Yeah, yeah. What about you? Well, for me, I, I, I found myself getting a little more emotional with this one than, than with the original. Yeah, maybe I had some weird expectation when I saw the first one, you know, being a little bit older and having it, you know, it, was, it had been out for a long time and the expectations were super high. I mean, my expectations were high with this one, but I don't know. I thought the whole father-son dynamic and that, you know, generational thing just was, you know, I, I thought it was cool and I thought it was well done. It wasn't overdone. They didn't try to be too sappy, but... You know, I found myself getting a little emotional towards the end. Not necessarily a tearjerker, but, you know, it was nice to see those those emotions play out for me. I like that. And, uh, yeah, I thought John Hamm did a really good job in his role. I, I'd kind of forgotten that he was in this movie at all. I thought he played that character very well. Um, having dealt with people like that in real time, do you feel like he did a good job there? Yeah, he was a bureaucratic officer that was, you know, skirting a line between doing what's right but also keeping order. Um, I do still get kind of annoyed with some scenes though. Like I was an officer, right? There's, there's respect levels. There's things you don't say to people. There's things that would never be said in this. They, they over dramatize that, right? They would have seen him in the bar with his, his insignia saying captain Mitchell, which in, in the Navy, a captain is a colonel, which is one away from general. I think a whispers that in the theater. Yeah. Um, so I was a captain, but I was a captain, which is a lieutenant in the Navy. So all those, all of them, all of them were lieutenants. Yeah. All of them were captains for all purposes. He was a colonel which he should have been an admiral, as he said in the movie. So one away from general. They would not be picking up a one away from a general and throwing it. Like, just, just some of the scenes, I'm like, yeah, it's pl-. And that was, I know, it was fun. And maybe maybe you kind of would do that. I've had stuff like that happen kind of to me, like in lightheartedness, if you know the person. But even more to the point, like when they're in the, um, like the fight that broke out and some of the insubordination, or sometimes when they would like make snide comments during like a lesson, like, no. It, it, that stuff doesn't, there, there's a respect level that's maintained. And maybe one in a hundred times you see it, but not like a constant, like, you know, throwing one liners or snarky comments and stuff like that. And anyway, I mentioned the point of John Hamm, like he played a good job playing him, but some other people kind of, no, they, 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 that's not how it really worked. Really I don't think. Yeah. So were there any other glaring errors that you uh, saw? You had mentioned a salute. 
to me yesterday when we were leaving the theater, how that's played out. You never, so the person, the, the lower ranking person always has to salute the higher ranking person. Um, any enlisted soldier who's not a commissioned officer, so a non-commissioned officer or even a warrant officer must salute a commissioned officer. So if you're the lowest ranking commissioned officer, which is a second lieutenant, and you're an E9, which is a sergeant major or whatever else, whatever service was a non-commissioned officer, that guy could be in for 30 years. You could be in for your first six months. You have to salute that guy because he outranks you, right? Number two, when somebody salutes you, um, you meet the salute and you do not drop the salute until the person you're saluting drops their salute. It's a sign of disrespect otherwise. And then, of course, no one in the movie can ever salute. <laughs> like, they always do it very, like, you can't see me doing it in my hand, but they do it very cringy. <laughs> it's never accurate. And you're like, it takes five seconds to learn how to do this. Yeah, why do you think that is? I think because people watch too many movies, and the movies they think it's cool and sharp, but it's not. Right. But do you think they're encouraged by production to get some things wrong? Kind of like you you had hinted at that when we were talking about it previously. Like, they, they, you can't get everything spot on accurate. Something I heard, and I need to research this, I heard it was different, though. It's like uniforms and tanks and, like, insignias. I was told, I wasn't told, I was reading it before. I haven't confirmed this. Like, on a uniform, I'll notice they get stuff wrong, like rank or kind of, like, branches they're in or stuff they couldn't possibly have for badges. I was told, or what I'm sorry, I read they purposely get some things wrong because you can't, you're not in the military, so you can't wear the full uniform. So they have to get stuff wrong because then you're not really wearing the uniform. You're really wearing an actor's uniform of a military officer or a military, you know, non-commissioned officer or whatever. I don't know if that's true. I don't think it would relate to the salute thing. I think it's, I, I think it's genuinely just people like to get excited and put the hand up and put it down because it's sexy, but no, not a big deal, but people know how to salute. Yeah. One of the things I noticed, I, I mentioned Tom Cruise and how, you know, I, I do like him and I think he's one of the last kind of marquee movie stars working is that uh, Tom Cruise, I believe, you know, you can fact check this if you want. And I, I didn't, but it popped in my head that he's never done television in his career. And he's the only A-list actor, headline movie star, I believe that's never done television. Not once. It's interesting. Yeah. Kind of a random, you know, piece of trivia there. Maybe, yeah, I'm not even going to name him. I don't know why it just popped in my head. Vin Diesel probably hasn't done television. <laughs> but he's probably the only one. I mean, The Rock, he's huge. He's done television. Yeah, I don't think Toretto's very huge. Uh, huge something, maybe. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. That's, that's a good, interesting concept. Uh, yeah. Or, or, uh, yeah. I'm pretty, pretty easy to check. but I mean, even DiCaprio, like back in the day, right? He was on what, Facts of Life or mm-hmm. Family Matters or not Family Matters. With yeah, Urkel. he was Urkel. He, <laughs> filled, he filled in a couple of times when he was sick. How'd you feel about Connolly and him, the romantic entanglement? That was one thing I was going to say. I personally could have done without that. I understand why they had it. It's fan service. But that little storyline, when, when they would meet up in the bar, they, I thought some of the scenes were okay in the bar when he got carried out. But the whole romantic aspect of it, I just felt like it was just taking away from the, the, what I wanted to see. You know what I mean? I just felt like it was kind of a, a distraction for me. Um, I think Jennifer Connelly's beautiful. She's a great actress. But, yeah, I could have done without that personally. Yeah. And uh, Requiem for a Dream, she's super beautiful. Um, I think she looks better here, man. I think she's really aged like a fine No, in the fine wine. scene, she's just gorgeous. Oh, no. Come on. The Requiem <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I didn't pick up on that immediately. It's, it's, yeah. I'm not going to revisit that one. Um, Boy. It's funny you mentioned that because I, I kept thinking, like, if I was the editor of this movie, this could have been cut back by 20 minutes. Yeah, that's a big complaint. Like that bar scene. It's funny. I went from being like, okay, this is yeah, that scene where he's going Mach ten and whatever that is. Oh, like, oh, it's cool as shit, man. And then that bar scene. That bar scene was so cringe. It was taking so long. We knew that he was going to play. You break my uh, goodness gracious, great great balls of fire. Yeah, we knew that was coming. He was dressed like his dad, and and then like the banter i i was the supporting character that wasn't super impressed with tellers glenn powell or teller again glenn powell crew's good i liked his his friend the, the the bigger black guy with the glasses he was in the few moments he got he was good he was good yeah i liked him i don't i can't recall seeing him in anything else can you not to talk, his, he's, i've seen him before his face but i don't know what yeah ham was good yeah the other um black guy that the the, the two-star admiral oh um, yeah warlock warlock yeah good call and I think he was in the original, right? 
That's why I he nods know. at him. Yeah, because he knew him from the original Top Gun. Because there was a warlock in Top Gun, I'm pretty sure. Man, I look at an actor like that. I'm like, you, I mean, this is a personal opinion, but I don't see how this person with this demeanor could play anything besides character like this. Because he's so good in it. He was a solid, yeah, solid supporting character. Yeah. Oh, the big thing to talk about, being a gamer, Joseph Kaczynski, who was in digital architecture for a long time until he decided to make movies, made the trailer for Mad War, or Gears of War, the Mad World one, which we've all probably watched, or the majority of us have. And I've been watching his career for a long time. Did Tron Legacy, did Oblivion, which is how Cruz knew him. And then I forgot, I remember reading years ago he was going to direct this, and I just forgot about it. And then as soon as it started, it started and said Joseph Kaczynski film, I got excited. I like him a lot. Yeah. And what's crazy is this is for, it must have been hard for him. Again, he did digital architecture his career beforehand. That's why Oblivion's so beautiful. That's why Tron Legacy, because he actually had a company do it, and he actually knows what he, he can do it himself. Kind of like the guy from District 9, the main character. Oh, uh, Blondkamp? Or, no. Oh, Charlto Copley? Yeah, they, he, has a, he had a digital production company. He had a production company really? making, doing special effects. That's how him and Blomkamp made friends. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, because yeah, he kind of got his breakthrough with District 9, but he was older, right? Like mid-30s or something like that. Yeah. That was the first movie he was ever in. He had a company doing that. So did um, Gollum. Circus? Yeah, Sir, Andy, Andy Circus, Circus has his own product. Yeah, very oh, does really? special effects and whatnot. That's awesome, yeah. man. Just seeing these people who have you know really excelled in, in acting and they, they have other passions. Yeah, like that. so. Yeah, that's nice. To the point, though, uh, Kaczynski is, is huge on making beautiful, you know, we've watched Strong Legacy with that, and he got probably none of that. No yeah. CGI. Imagine being like getting someone like him. I'm surprised they, they, they had him do it. Yeah. He did a great job, obviously, but it's like, wow, he's, he must have been really grounded going from you have to do like, you know, 2050 movies or sorry, 2,500 movies where it's like way in the future and cool, and now you got this, and it's like grounded, no special effects, real time, you know. Again, I feel like I've said more here. I want to hear more from you. Well, okay. Um, I'll say another little piece of trivia here that I know. The um, beach volleyball scene that is so iconic in the original was now a beach football scene in this one, if you haven't seen it. I guess they shot this, and Tom Cruise wasn't pleased with the physiques on the actors. So they spent <laughs> two weeks. These guys hit the gym like some crazy animals, and then they went back and shot it again. So I guess they buffed up for that. But um, yeah, just random there. What do you think about that scene? Do you like that one? So what you mean is in two weeks, they uh, trend hard and never give up. What is it? Trend hard and never give up? And never, trend and, hard. And never give up? Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe. You know, oh, know. they definitely did. They probably pumped them full of steroids and stuff to dry them out and said, well, <laughs> starve yourself for two weeks and here's some chicken breast and broccoli fatty. Yep. This footage is going to live forever. You got to look right. That's interesting. Cause it's kind of a, I don't want to say douchey thing, but I wonder how that went by. I wonder how that conversation went. I, 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 you know, like you guys don't look good enough for this. Interesting. I, well, again, you got to give them credit. Like the, those dudes were freaking jacked. They look great. Yeah. yeah. I'd say some of the girls, but they're wearing the most non-sexual. Well, I mean, it's, 12 year old boy body Asian girl and like, you know, the Hispanic chick with no curves. So I guess they didn't have much to work with anyway. But the guys look like they're freaking jacked. Well, some of them had shirts on. One had Bob. Shirt. Bob did. And Bob is Bill Pullman's son from Independence Day. <laughs> Do you know that? From an, oh, just from Independence Day. I know who Bill Pullman is. <laughs> thank you for that. That's all he's done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he actually didn't fly a plane in Independence Day, but, but Pullman learned to here. And uh, God, that would be so cool as an actor, don't you think, to get this kind of training and be able to do this real time for a movie like this? They used to do in the army, and Air, uh, they got rid of it, I think. If you recruited five people in the Air Force, you got a free ride in a jet. Uh, and then they took it away. But there was, used to be able to do that. And I always thought that would be really cool. Oh, and you asked me a question in the movie. I think a B-2 stealth bomber is like two or three billion, like multiple billion. So you're like, how much is that jet? Is in the movie? That was a multi-billion dollar. Aircraft. The one he hit Mach 10.0. Three yeah. or yeah, it's, it's, four anyway. it's a multi billion dollar, yeah. It was a theoretical, I think it was theoretical or not real, or wow. maybe it was, or it was on a frame of something, yeah. I remember when I was a little being so fascinated with those planes because we had some fruit snacks that I would take to uh, elementary school, and there were all the different shapes of planes. And the coolest one was the grape, and it was the, it was the bomber. I don't know, you remember that? I was at a bomber base when I was in the Air Force, and I went, one time I went out back and I looked up, and two B-2s were flying out. They were right next to each other. I was like, that's like $5 billion in the air. Just like, they were Unbelievable. probably they were just right next to each other. It was cool. Do you know how long it takes, training-wise, to be able to fly one of those? For I don't know training-wise, but one thing they did good with the real world, again, I was in the Air Force 15 years ago. When I was in, 
back that long ago was the first year at some point when I was in was the first year there was more drone pilots trade than real pilots. That was like 10 or 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. So now it's probably like 20% of the pilots are real pilots. 80% are drones, which by the way, Nellis or first place in Las Vegas is where the majority of drones are from all the military come from. Um, or at least the air force do. Yeah. Wow. This is a drone air force. Yeah. So if you see like something in Afghanistan or Iraq, whatever, they're usually in Nellis, uh, dropping bombs on people and whatnot. Wow. But, uh, no, I don't know how much training it takes. Um, okay. and there are, they, they did a good point of doing the, you know, the future coming up on the old legacy, you know, mm-hmm. the jo- what is it? The John Henry. Yeah. The John Henry, John Henry. What do you mean? The steel versus the, the hammer. Yeah. Yeah. That's, oh. Yeah. You know, tradition versus. Yeah. Yeah. I gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I did like the fact that they didn't, you know, seem to put anything political in this movie. I know we kind of touched on that earlier with the, you know, not, disclaiming or not stating, you know, where the enemy was or who the enemy was. They just, you know, just made a good blockbuster, you know, movie. And it was really enjoyable. I can't wait for something else like this. I don't know if anything's coming, but yeah, this is nice. You mentioned Connolly and the relationship. Yeah. Anything else you didn't like in the movie? Cons. No, no, that was the only thing. That was the only thing I could think of. And yeah, I mean, going back to the bar scene that you had mentioned, it, it went on a little long for me. You know, it's I again, it's fan service. I get it, but just does nothing for me. I'm just like ready for it to be over. You know? Yeah. How about you? I, I say in one vein that I review movies based off the merit of what it's supposed to be. In this case, a Hollywood blockbuster summer hit. Mm-hmm. You know, it would be nice to walk away. I walked away with nothing thematically or emotionally or motivationally or inspirationally. It was just in terms of that, I walked away having fun and having a good time and enjoying myself and, you know, them earning my money for sure. But I didn't walk away like, Oh, that was kind of an insight. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Closest I got was the whole, you know, drones versus the pilot, you know, these things are going to overtake over everything soon. You know, that, that was a cool thing. So I wish there would be more of that. Cause I think they did lean way too much on the thing I was hoping they wouldn't do, which was hat tipping to the original. And they did a lot of that. I feel like, yeah. In my, again, if you're the screenwriter, it's kind of a dream. You got to have a Val Kilmer scene. Mm. You got to have the flyby scene, which he does near the end of the aircraft. You got to have the goose scene. You got to have the, like. There's a lot of things they had. You know the um, the bar scene. You have to have a bar scene. You have to have a romantic interest, just like that. So Tom Cruise is the chat. Like there was a lot there that was way too many hat tips for me. I would have liked less. And I've told you guys before that sequels always do that. You know they they do. I feel too many hat tips. Yeah. As opposed to like. They do direct hat tips to things as opposed to thematic hat tips, right? Maybe the character always does something daring involving women or something, right? So just do that again, but don't do the exact same scene, right? Or exact sure. same thing. Do the spirit of that repeated, and they, re- they rarely do that in sequels. Agreed, yeah. And you've touched on that before in previous reviews, how you know it's, it tends to just kind of you know carbon copy what's been done before. So do you prefer the sequel or the original? I had a hard time with that. I was thinking about it the whole time I was watching it. I'd have to watch the, the original again to really answer that, you know? Yeah. Well, um, let me ask you, would you, would you want to see this again? Or do you feel like you got it? I got it. I, I got my, my roller coaster ride. I would do it again just passively. You've seen me before. I'll like, you know, play a video game and have a movie on the background. I'll watch it in the background again. Yeah. But I'll never actively watch it again. Okay. Maybe yeah. just a scene or two, the ones that you love. So what, what was your favorite scene? I think I probably already know. It's probably mine too. You go first. Yeah, it was the opening scene. Really? Yeah, for sure. And that shot where they go over Ed Harris's character and the oh, that was great. Oh. And the thing, uh, yeah, the thing goes out. Yeah, so beautiful. Yeah, it was fun, but I really did have a good. They did a good use of screenwriting. And again, like this is again, I, I'm being that guy. You're not going to get the key. It's not like a fucking construction to, like uh, like crane where you just like get the keys to it and turn it on. And you just take the crane away, right? Where he's like magically in the jet. But it was it was a complete movie moment but when they're looking at the timer and they're like we're now set to four minutes and they change it to 215 and Cruz is in the you know we all knew it was coming too again. right and he's in it and he does his uh renewering and whatnot and he shoots it the star wars scene by the way i did kind of laugh at that that's such a fucking star wars you know <laughs> use the force luke take your visor up and use <laughs> that's yes. what that was it was exactly that it was very similar. and they took the death star out <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the point was I, I like that. They get a good use of the digital display, too, of it going through, and the, 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 the tension was fun. All right, man. What are you, what are you giving it? 8-2. Uh, I got 8-1. Eight 8.1. Eight really? Yep. 
I'm glad we're so conservative in these things. Yeah, we, <laughs> we 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 need to start reviewing movies that we don't like. I think. Yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, it was. It was great. I I don't know if I'll want to see it again. Um, maybe if it's on TV. I'm really really glad we saw it in theaters because I I think that's by and large the best way to do it. Too bad it wasn't IMAX, but. Yeah, pretty incredible, man, what they did. I mean, if you're going to see it for anything, just see it for the, the visuals and the practical effects because they're absolutely, absolutely incredible. And Tom Cruise is, he's a stud, you know, pretty incredible at what he does. Yeah, and you said something, we, we qualify this way too much, like, oh, we got to start picking bad movies. We, we pick good movies usually. Yeah. That's why we went to it. I'm not, that was, okay, there you go. That's the first movie I've seen in a theater in like years. Really? Yeah, I'm sure that's true for, I've read that a lot of people had that comment when I read on the internet or in yeah. reviews. Yeah. So, um, well, that's good. I mean, I think it's good for theaters in general and movie going that this movie is such a, such a success because hopefully it'll lead to other things like this being greenlit by larger studios that can finance stuff like this because I like going to the movies. I mean, I love it. It's, um, about that experience that's still kind of magical to me. So, and that you're right, that has been gone for a while, but, um, yeah, nice to see things back to, you know, kind of the way they used to be here. So props to Top Gun for, for, for that. Yeah. Yeah. Epstein didn't kill himself. All right. So we, uh, yeah, I, I think the last episode we had said Ford versus Ferrari. So I guess we'll segue that to the next uh, little chat that we have. Yes. Um, if you're okay with that, cool. Cause we still haven't seen that neither of us. And we'll do that obviously from the comfort of our own home, not in a theater, but um, Ford versus Ferrari next week. See you soon. Wait, let's give a little outro here. It Never. puts the lotion for the skin or it gets the hose again. It puts the lotion in the skin or it gets the hose again. You gotta put your pants back on. Seriously. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes in the links. 